King's Quest Six. You're right. All right, are you ready for the countdown? Yes. Okay. Okay, three, two, one, go. All right, this is Mickey Mania. Uh, this version is the Super Nintendo version. Uh, it was also made for Genesis, Sega CD, and then re-released for PlayStation 1. So there's a lot of different versions. We're going to kind of get started really quickly here. One of the most interesting things in this game is that there's uh, some code in the game that lets you skip to the end of the level. We call it a level warp. And basically what happens is that um, when there gets to be too many sprites on the screen, in other games, like, they would just spawn an enemy or something like that. In this game, it just decides we're going to run this line of code that lets you skip to the end of the level. <laughs> so uh, you'll see that a few times in the run. There's really not much to see. Basically, the screen goes blank, but we're just executing, like, a, a specific number of, uh, or specific movements that kind of cause it to uh, overload with, on the sprites. So yeah, this level used to be like one of the most technical levels in the game, but one of the nice things about this game is there's actually been a lot of uh, new strategies found recently, because we have a lot of uh, new runners and a lot of people finding things. I was definitely one of the first runners to bring it back, but um, I'm not that great at finding new strategies, so it's nice that other people have been uh, helping me out with that a little bit. Oh my gosh, I started three seconds early. Oh, the run's over. So yeah, this game was actually one of the first games that like Disney animators worked on. So the animation is actually pretty fun. Mickey always looks super happy no matter how many skeletons he runs into. Uh, the only bad thing is that the animation does make it a little difficult to tell, like, where Mickey is sometimes. And I was actually going to give myself extra lives for marathon safety, but I forgot, so... <laughs> Let's just hope everything goes well, cross our fingers. Because some of the new strategies are kind of difficult, and one in particular, if you miss it, you will, you will die, so hopefully it goes great. Hey, Craig Dude! Craig Dude is the current world wrecker in this game. I'm six seconds away from him, so we're gonna get it soon. Yeah, I'm, I'm not too worried about the timer, because the, the chances of this being world record is fairly slim. So yeah, a lot of the optimization is, you know, movement. Uh, Mickey has several different jump heights, so it's, you know, deciding how high to jump at any given time. Or um, the other optimization is uh, health management is really important in this game because uh, the, there is lots of health, but not a lot of it, like, actually on route. The health is the fingers in the upper left corner, which a lot of people don't immediately realize, but um, so it's trying to like figure out where you can use the health to go faster by going through enemies and just taking damage or using invincibility frames and when when you should like wait and like save save the health for later. So that's a lot of what we've been working on is just trying to like time things out and um, within the last two weeks, like, we probably saved another 30 seconds, which, on a run that's ultimately 20 minutes, that's pretty good. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yes, this is going to be world record. I apologize. You're right. Always assume it's going to be world record until it's not. And the fact that I forgot to give myself extra lives means it actually could be. Because normally in marathons, I do a little safety, but I forgot. <laughs> so, hopefully, no reset, no, no game over. <laughs> this marathon is full of spooky. 
This is the spooky, one of the two spooky levels. There's skeletons everywhere. Alright, so this fight is uh, a time save, because it's kind of technical. Mostly you can hit the doctor like every few seconds, and so you try to hit him as soon as you possibly can with no... Like if he walks there, that means you didn't hit him quick enough. Alright, I haven't been counting. Okay. <laughs> I should have jumped up and get that other life, but I got distracted. That's alright. We'll be fine on this next level. So there's little cutscenes that are playing in between. Like this pencil comes out and like draws a little cutscene in between. But you can skip it. And so obviously for a speedrun you want to skip it. Well, also on that last level, sometimes there's a glitch where the door doesn't open. It hasn't happened to me in a long time. But I'm always just like waiting for it to happen in a marathon. Because it's a reset. You, it's like hard locks the game. So these branches can be a little tricky. You have to press like back and forth kind of fast. And sometimes Mickey ends up ducking for some reason. <laughs> Just because of the way the D-pad is. So I'm always yelling at Mickey. No ducking, please. Alright, that was pretty good. So this level is like a good example of Mode 7, and it also reminds people of the level in The Lion King, which is like another chase level. Um, I do find it fun that he's eating apples to go faster, because everybody knows, if you're a runner, you can confirm, eating apples while you run definitely makes you run much faster. Also, this is kind of fun. This level is the shortest level in the game, probably. And it has two loading zones because it, like, has a little effect at the beginning of it. Which, it's like, it loads twice as long just so it can do this. Whoop! <laughs> kind of a tricky jump here. We made it. Okay, so this is the level that actually, like, we found a bunch of new things like in the last week. <laughs> so it makes the level a little bit harder, but it's got some fun new strategies. So again with the health management, it's just like which ghosts to skip through, which ones to ignore. So that's like, you have to jump on a specific stair in order not to slide down. Like, you're supposed to slide down every ramp like that, but some of them you can skip with a kind of specific jump. Alright, we got that one. Alright, we got a kind of a specific jump coming up here, too. You can go a cycle early if you jump quick enough. We got it. Alright, this is going pretty well. Um, to have full life here is pretty much ideal. <laughs> yeah, I apologize if you can hear my pug. She's protecting the neighborhood with her furiosity. We have goats on boats. Oh, I took damage. That's not good. Oh well, we're still okay. Alright, missed the rope, but that's alright. So now, like, if you take any additional damage, you skip this part which takes like three extra damage, so if you took any additional damage, which I did unfortunately on the boats, you're down to no extra health, which 
makes the chances of dying a lot higher. So we'll just have to focus on playing perfectly and we'll be fine. Just just don't make any mistakes, it'll be perfect. Ghost on, <laughs> snakes on a plane too, ghosts on a boat. I would watch that movie. So actually what you're doing is like rescuing those Mickeys. However, you don't get to see them very long in the speed run. That one was running against a wall for some reason. Probably because of the ghost. The levels in this game are interesting because they're very out of order as far as difficulty, like both from a speedrunning perspective but also from a casual perspective. Like I'd say this level is pretty easy compared to the previous one. Although it does have one of the new tricks which is um, one of the harder ones to do. Alright, this is the dragonfly fly jump. Okay, I think we got it. Three, four, five... Alright, we got it. So that was discovered by Liam Piper, and it saves four seconds, so it's pretty significant, but the timing is very tight, and so if you jump too early, you'll miss the dragonfly entirely. If you jump too late, then the dragonfly goes away before you can get the last jump. <laughs> And then you just die either way. I think these falling things are beetle babies? I don't know. We kind of debate about that. Some people say they're spiders. Some people say... I always think thought they were beetles. So basically, Mickey's a home wrecker. Okay, so even though we took one extra hit, there's enough health coming up that we'll, we will be able to be back to full if we play everything else pretty well. Because there's just more health in this level that's kind of on route, which is nice. can kind of get back to uh, full. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. This is my second marathon, so at least I had like a little bit of practice doing this once before. Okay, kind of a tight jump here. Get in there. We got it. Nice. That was really good. So pick up one health here, and then one more health on the next level, and then we should be back to full as long as the butterflies are nice to us. So another interesting thing about this game was it, it was actually the first game that David Jaffe worked on. Uh, if you don't know who David Jaffe is, he was actually the lead designer on the God of War series. So I always like to say it's a pretty natural transition <laughs> from Mickey to God of War. I mean, this game is pretty violent, I think. Okay, we did take damage on the butterflies. Not the end of the world, but it would be nice to have full health here. Everyone makes fun of me because I'm from Minnesota and I say extra guys. I really do think that's like a Midwestern thing. Yeah, Mickey to Kratos. I mean, Mickey's not quite like destroying things from the inside out, but almost. I mean, he's pretty mean to animals. Alright, these chandeliers have killed many a run because the physics are a little... wonky. But we got it. Alright, we took some damage there. You can avoid taking damage there. Okay, I didn't make that jump. So this... section's a little messed up. Okay, I gotta kill this guy. I realized that just now. Okay. Hopefully we hit him twice. Okay. Oh, right, we're just trying not to get stabbed now by an arrow. Okay, we killed him, but we didn't make the jump. It's funny because this jump is not super hard, but sometimes it trolls me. Okay, 
rest of the level went fine. We'll get some extra health here. Uh, with these, like, weasels, you can marble through the dagger-throwing ones, but you can't with the crossbow. It's like their hitbox is just, just a little too wide. Although, you can do it, it's just, it's too precise to do in most places. Oh yeah, reset, exactly. Oh wait, it's a marathon. That's actually one of my, like, worries, is that I'll be playing at a marathon and I'll forget it's supposed to be no reset. Alright, we did that without getting hit, which is nice. Okay, so coming up is one of the more... It's probably the most difficult new trick in the game. And because I don't have much health, I'll probably die if I miss it. Which is fine, it's at the beginning of this level, but... Um, it's called Duck Jump! <laughs> so, you have to jump at a very specific spot here. Alright, I missed it. Alright, yep. So, we're gonna get to try it again. You get to see the Mickey death scene with the flower. Somebody was like, he just, he doesn't really die, he's just tired. I'm like, yeah, everybody lays down with the flower on their chest when they're tired. That's how I sleep. Okay, we will get to try this again. It is very precise. I miss it quite often, even in runs. Alright, we got it. So that's good, because this level is cycle-based. There's a cycle at the end which is global for the level, and so if you get the duck jump, it sets it up for a pretty nice cycle. Alright, see if we can do this jump without damage. No, we took damage, that's alright. That's another tight one, but it's there either way. Actually, in my PB, I had a death too. Like, with the new strats, it's just really a lot tougher to do a uh, no death run. Like it used to be much easier because you'd have more extra health, but now everything's a lot more optimized, so you just can't you can't run around with extra health when you could have a time save. Alright, not bad. Uh, barbecue, yeah, it's um, a finger of the glove, so it like goes down each one. Yeah, Senbo, so it's like how many fingers are sticking up on the glove. So this is like, if you have extra health, you spend it here. I think I might keep one because of a trick that I'm doing on the next level. So that means we have to jump over a lot of barrels. But if you had extra health here, you could skip barrels, which is nice. I'm gonna test my barrel jumping skills here. But skipping barrels, like, is kind of a time loss, so... It's nice when you have extra health. And these platforms fall, but not very fast, so it's not a huge deal. Even when you have to stand and wait for a barrel, it usually takes a long time for it to fall down. On the Genesis version, they fall, like, almost immediately. So the Genesis version, um, is, this level is much different. It has, like, spiky balls that fall down instead of barrels, and the platforms fall a lot faster. But I think the balls are easier to dodge, so it kind of evens out. Yeah, this game is challenging, uh, Gabriel. It definitely is. When I was a kid, I'd never beat it. Um, in fact, I remember having my brother play that last level where you climb up the tower. Oh, uh, what am I doing? Alright. Okay, here's the third and last level warp. Okay. I almost thought I didn't get it for a second. That would have been scary. <laughs> okay, so this is the Pete fight. Uh, like so many Disney games, uh, you can't, you don't even like have marbles anymore. Like the weapon that you've used for the entire game is gone. Because um, it's not strong enough to be the boss or whatever. So um, Pete 
is the master of his own demise. Which, I don't know, I think that was... That seemed to be common in a lot of games where it's like, we need to do something different on the boss, so we'll just have spikes and things fall down that you can kill him with. And also this fight is like... It's basically on a timer. As long as you don't mess it up, you won't ever... Um, like, save time on it. Alright, I kind of lost track of how many hits I had on him. So hopefully this is the last one. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm not so good at counting when I'm trying to like talk at the same time, so sometimes I lose track of like how many hits. So there's going to be like six of these um, wrecking ball hits and then it'll be time, so I'll let you know when it's coming up. These um, falling stars are not random. I originally thought that they were, but they actually fall in a very specific pattern. Uh, one which Risu Press, who has done a lot of work on this game was very kind to like map out for me and like okay you stand on this stone at this point and you stand here at this point I just I don't know I never learned it <laughs> so I just wing it every time which is probably not the best idea but I've been doing it for so long that I mean you only get hit maybe once or twice and most of them like aren't too hard to dodge when you kind of can expect what's coming Alright, is this six or is this four? I think this is four. Oh, no, that's it. So that's time. I told you I was bad at counting. Okay, and then the other nice thing about this game is that um, when you do finally beat the game, it gives you an advertisement for the next cartoon. <laughs> so it's like, congratulations, watch the next cartoon. It's coming out soon. Okay, that was a 2149. Yes! At least I got 21! <laughs> I wasn't expecting uh, anything really close because we had some mess ups in library, but I'm happy because I think, I think uh, my last marathon run was a 22 something, so yes! New marathon record. <laughs> thanks everybody, and uh, thanks to, to the marathon um, for letting me run this game. <laughs>